Okay, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, EQ the snare. So I'll take my kick off. So I've got that nice EQ the way I want it. And I'm going to move down here. And in this recording, we had two microphones on the snare, one on the top, one on the bottom, and that captures different tones. So let's just solo the snare up. So that's the mic on top of the snare. Listen to that. So we've got nice thwack off that, that snare, here in the skin there. Let's listen to the one underneath it on its own. Okay, a lot higher pitched and a lot rattlier. Uh, combine them together. One there a bit loud, but together you get a nice blend of snare, nice big snare sound. Okay, which is nice. But for this exercise today, we're just going to look at this snare here. And in a typical four microphone drum setup, you'd probably just have a snare up or a snare on the top of the drum skin. Um, but you can just have one on the underneath if you want. Um, up to you, you're the producer. So let's look at the snare. Uh, what I should have done is gated this quickly. So I'll just give it a quick gate and again won't be perfect okay great so gated that and again could tune it a bit more but let's leave it there so let's open up the EQ and have a look at the gate uh, sorry the gate the EQ, what frequency information we've got coming in by hitting the analyzer. Okay, so where's the peak? Yep, it's around here. So our peak is around 158, okay, which is average for snare. Um, some tunes, uh, uh, snares are tuned higher or lower. Metal snares tend to be tuned lower jazz and pop and funk snares tend to be tuned higher but this is average very very average for a snare so let's look at what else we've got coming in okay we've got a nice like even sort of uh, descending slope across frequencies here so loudest is in the the low mids here and we've got a bit of information in the high mids and a bit of high there as well okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our chart and we're going to have a look at the snare drum section and it's telling us that in that section we just looked at where our peak was that's where the fatness of the snare is okay so on an average snare yes i would agree um, whereas ours is actually a bit lower that is on average where the the fatness of the snare is okay so let's go back and we're going to use the scanning technique like i showed you in the kick drum video and we're going to narrow the sound width, start low. Okay, so you can hear quite audibly that as I boost or cut, it's making the snare fatter or thinner sounding. So let's cut it again. Sounds weak. Let's boost it too much and you're gonna get that weird w resonant sort of a uh, boxy sort of sound. And we're distorting like mad. Turn the snare down a little bit. So that's why you don't want to boost that big. Um, but let's see if we can get a nice added little bit of thump out of the snare. Okay, so I hope you can hear the difference between that on and off. Okay, little bit of 
added fatness there. There's nothing really going on in the low region, lower area, so what I'm going to do is just put the uh, high pass filter on and that will just clean up any frequencies that somehow got into the snare signal, help our mix overall. And we're going to go back to um, our chart and this is now telling us that there's a nice bit of bite at 2 kilohertz and crispiness between 4 and 8. Okay, so we're going to explore those, same technique. So move it up to 2. In fact, we're going to use this one. And we're going to, same technique. Okay, and scan around, find what frequency you like. You could hear that by boosting it too much around here. Gives you this horrible nasy nasally sound, so we don't want that. But boosting a little bit here is going to give us an added little bit of presence to the track. Here it sounds a bit duller, and with our boost on up here, we're getting a little bit of a uh, sort of an added bit of presence, a bit of brightness. So that sounds quite nice. Okay, um, we could also experiment with the crispiness quality that they're suggesting up here at 5k. Um, but I'm going to leave it for there. I've used quite a quite a low bandwidth, so quite a wide area there. So I'm sort of affecting that area as well. Okay. Um, last thing to mention that they don't put on the chart is around this sort of area on snares. These can sort of suffer from a similar to a kick drum, a kind of boxy quality. If we look at the information that's coming in. There is a bit of activity around here, so we can see by using another bell filter how we can affect that and if it's going to improve the snare sound overall or not. Okay, so boosted up, that is a horrible quality, so I'm probably going to end up cutting that. Again, you'll need to scan around, see where it sounds best, and adjust your, your gain. But to my ears, that's getting rid of a bit of like the boxy sort of sound of the snare and tightening it up overall. So listen again quick. It's emphasizing this thud here and the brightness up there. Okay, so obviously, there might be a few more different qualities in your snare recording that you might want to cut or boost. Um, these are the sort of key places to look for. Okay, thanks for watching.